Last time on I, the Somnium Files. Get off your Fortnite! I'm not playing Fortnite, besides, I'm playing Minecraft. Oh, it's just like, this one's wrong with this generation, I can't take this anymore. When will you play real video games? Hey guys, right here, and welcome back to I, the Somnium Files. Um, last episode, we met our wonderful friend Iris, who... There's very interesting opinions on and mixed opinions. Some people are like, man, she's creepy. Other people are like, I like Iris. Other people are just like, I don't even know what to think about this person. And I agree. I have very mixed opinions so far. I don't know anything about her or what she's really after. I don't feel like she's she's as evil as she comes off as or as sketchy, I guess I'd say. But everyone's definitely hiding a few things, especially her so far. We just have to redo this part. You should come in. No, that's all right. I'm gonna head home. Ooh, going home already? I said my goodbyes, then turned to leave. But out of the corner of my eye... It's the lady from our, uh, from our mind. But how do we know oh, her? Who is this, Iris? Oh, that's her mother, isn't it? I felt my body freeze. Because that woman. She's. No, it can't be. It can't be. I felt like my mind and my body were being torn apart in opposite directions. As I stood there stunned, Iris grabbed my hand. Come on, I'll make some tea. Looks like we're not leaving quite yet. You're... Nice to meet you. I'm Iris's mother, Hitomi. Miss Hitomi. And you are? Konami Date, from the MPD. Police? Are you a detective? No, Mom. Mr. Date said he's... Iris? Oh, right. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. Okay. She seemed a little alarmed when, uh, we brought up that we were from the police. More so than normal, like, I feel like the normal mom thing to do would be like, what is my daughter in trouble for? But it's like... A detective, almost as if there was something, you know? After an awkward silence, Iris brought, uh, Iris brought us some tea on a tray. She put everything down on the table and sat down on the sofa. There's a lot going on here. There's a photo. There's a drawing on the wall. I wonder if Iris drew this when she was younger. Microwave. Ah, let me know if you're cold. I'll pop you in there and warm you up. <laughs> I would suggest putting your heart in there first. Damn. A refrigerator. Date, a riddle. Okay. How do you put a giraffe in a refrigerator? I don't know. What? The solution is this. You open the door, put the giraffe in, and close the door. <laughs> what kind of a riddle is that? Another riddle. How do you put an elephant in the refrigerator? Isn't it the same answer? Open the door, put it in, close the door? Incorrect. The giraffe is already inside. Oh my god, Iba, you're hurting my brain. You must remove the giraffe before you put the elephant inside. That is the solution. Your riddles could use some work. <laughs> They're just sitting here watching Date get, uh, like, visibly upset and like, Are you okay? It's like, I need more riddles. There are a lot of dishes. Um... Oh, wait a sec. Interest... It's a microwave. It's a fridge. Oh, when you're done looking at an object, I realize it's, it turns off being green, like it stops highlighting as green. Foam. The telephone in the corner. Flower. Flowers. Oh, those are the same ones that were in the dream. In fact, this entire room is the room from the dream. Or at least the second... No, it's the same room. 
From the second part, at it's least. It's an iris. An iris? I thought those bloom in May. That's the winter iris. Iris ungicularis. They bloom in the cold. They bloomed just this morning. I see. In the language of flowers, the iris means good news and hope. When I saw the flowers this morning, I just knew something good would happen. Did something good happen? There's a lot of ellipses in this game. A winter iris, it means good news and hope. One thing I do appreciate that they did with mouse is that there's a lot of, like, optional keyboard controls, but you can just drag it around with the mouse and play this game like this. Which is great for me, because I'm very out of position right now to use my keyboard anyways. There's a calendar and a strange object on the shelf. It reminds me of a kind of angel. What is that object? There's a tabletop calendar and a mysterious object on the shelf. Shoebox. It's a shoebox. I wonder what they smell like. What? You are beyond perverted. <laughs> hey, these thoughts are private, okay? So wait, she has access to our direct thoughts? It's a shoebox. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was just everything we kind of thought towards Iba, but they have access to everything. A bookshelf. There are no books on it, but it's definitely a bookshelf. I saw it in a catalog before, so I know. The lights are off. There's the basket I put on her head. A bookshelf. Anything I missed? I've seen that cushion somewhere before. No, not just the cushion. I saw this entire room in my dream last Is night. Is there a problem, Date? No, that's nothing. Alright, let's start talking to... Oh, what's this? Workbooks. There's some elementary workbooks on the table. But looking closely, one in the middle is different. Osagami Sumo Wrestler Dic or Directory. Osagami Sumo? Tea. Steam is rising from the tea. A coffee table. Okay, I guess we'll talk to Iris's mom, Hitomi, first. Uh... About Renju Okiura. By the way, I heard that you were friends with the president of Lemnisgate, Mr. Okiura. Renju was my classmate at Eitoku High. We've known each other for 20 years now. Eitoku High. You know it? I know everything on the internet. Fair enough. I feel like using... Using I is like when someone asks you a question, you're like, of course I know the answer, and then you quickly, like, dig into your phone to Google it as fast as possible. Yes, I do. Oh, so he does know Shoko. But I only met her twice. Once at Renju's wedding, and then again just a few months ago. Why do you ask? No reason. And we're not gonna tell her that she's dead? I'm a teacher at the local elementary school. A teacher? Must be a tough job. Oh, <laughs> not for me. I love children. Even the struggles and challenges are quite rewarding for me. Oh, okay. Interesting. How old are you? I'm 37. And Miss Iris here is 18? Yep. You were very young when you had her. Yes, just 19 years old. What about your husband? Oh. I don't have one. Divorce? Mr. Date, please! It's all right, Iris. I've never been married. A single mother? Yes. I saw her. I saw her in my dream last night. No, that's impossible. You look chipper. <laughs> you think so? Then again, you always kind of look that way. Yeah. I was just thinking about a hunch I had this morning. A hunch? There are flowers blooming behind me, right? There are, yeah. What about them? <laughs> what does that mean, about the flowers? Iris was hinting about the flowers blooming behind her. A winter iris. It means good news and hope. 
I don't know what she means by that. It's weird that the screen turns kind of gray. Iris was hinting at the flowers blooming behind her. You were saying? Mr. Date, please drink your tea. It's getting cold. Oh, right. <laughs> we haven't even touched our cups. Well then, let's have a sip. Well, I mean, the, the atmosphere in here has been pretty awkward. I'm like, hey, so you married? And then I thought about smelling your shoes, but they, they don't know that. Date, come on. Can't think like this. Are you left-handed? Oh, uh, Mom used to be right-handed, but now, hmm. Oh, injury. It locked up on me. Ah, oh, I see. Um, how long have you been living here? Since I was born, and Mom was living here before that. I grew up in this house. I've made a lot of memories here. I've thought about moving before, but I just couldn't bring myself to leave this place. Why were you considering moving? Well, because there was... well... Uh... Huh? Okay... Something about this is very weird. And there is something I really appreciate that they're doing with the 3D models here. A lot of the time you really can't convey this with sprites, but because we're using 3D model everything, um, some of the awkwardness in the conversation and some of the weird kind of silence from them sitting and staring at us are very apparent. Like, I definitely feel this... this tone to the conversation that's normal, but not quite right. You seem to be doing well now, Iris. Yeah, thanks to you! I'm glad to hear that. I feel as tough as a lion! Rawr! How am I supposed to react to that? <laughs> Don't think about it. You'll only hurt yourself. Uh, yeah, I'll... I'll see you later. Well, I think it's time for me to be heading home. I don't think there's much else for us to see around here. I stood and headed for the door. Iris and Hitomi stood politely. We'll see each other again, right? You sure you want that? I'm a cop after all. If you ever see me again, it probably won't be under the best of circumstances. Oh. But, because you're Mizuki's friend, yeah, we might see each other again. She is kind of like my roommate after all. What? Anyway, be seeing you. <laughs> oh, there's spot, she's like, what? Oh, that's right, your arm- oh, yeah. Uh, excuse me. My fault. Well, I should head home. Are we gonna go into our mine now? All right, take care, Date. Is that how this works? Oh, okay, no. That's not how that works. I thought we were gonna, like, go into our psych with a handshake, but I guess that's not quite how the Date mind room system works. <laughs> They haven't really cleared up on that, because when we did it, we were just Doctor, sitting in a random let's hospital go over room. The facts of the case. Good idea. Oh, hey. It's me. Focus, you've got this. Allow me to introduce myself? Hi. My name is Kaname Date. Nice to meet you. What? Date? I have the same name. What a coincidence. Perhaps he's had too much medication. <laughs> Hey, I mean, every once in a while we need to have a conversation with ourselves just to make sure that we're doing okay. Hey, me. Wanna play a game? Sure, let's play I Spy. I Spy something round. My eyeball. Correct. I win. <laughs> He's such a dork. I will terminate you. Oh, Jesus. Focus, you got this. Don't push yourself, Date. No. I'm fine, Tate. <laughs> you guys are saying he's a lot like Niles, and I agree. He reminds me so much of Niles sometimes. It's uncanny. Just a little dorkier. You do not appear to be fine. 
Now, who is this handsome gentleman? <laughs> oh, it's me. God damn it. Wait, why is your... Why is the steering wheel charging? Oh, no, it's I. Oh, so I... When I says they're gonna bring around the car, does that mean that they physically go and do it? I don't know, but all I know is we can charge it in the steering wheel, which is pretty cool. I was fitted into the center of the wheel. And in case, I guess it needs to go autopilot, I guess Iba could probably drive it themselves, right? What am I supposed to be looking for? The glove Do box. Do you hide your risque reading material in there, Date? Not at all. Why would I hide them there? The glove box. Center console. The center console. Nope. What am I supposed to be doing here? Iba. Oh, there we go. L about Shoko's corpse. The estimated time of death is yesterday, Friday, around 5 p.m. The cause of death is blood loss from multiple stab wounds to the torso. All right. The weapon used to commit the murder is almost certainly the ice pick Mizuki was holding when we discovered her. There were no fingerprints, hair, or other clues left behind by the culprit. I wonder if this is going to be one of those games where it's like, we go to this case, and now this case, and now this case, and now this case. Or it's just going to be like, this is one super long case that goes throughout the game. We're not actually, we're like slowly finding answers bit by bit. You know, the the technological steering wheel doesn't really ma like match with the rest of the car. But I guess, I guess that's the point of it. Because if you had too fancy of a car, there's a chance it'd be stolen more often, I suppose. I don't know. I bought about Shoko's corpse. The corpse was found tied up on one of the horses of the merry-go-round. This makes it clear that the killer had no intention of hiding their crime. Rather, it appears as though it was displayed deliberately. Our perp wants the limelight. Or is attempting to send some kind of message. About Shoko's corpse again. The corpse was found with her left eye removed. That eyeball has yet to be found. According to Iris's testimony, when Ota first discovered the body, the ice pick was still lodged in the left eye socket. So why did Mizuki have the ice pick? That's still something we haven't figured out. Or even gotten close to figuring out. Could she have taken the eye? Yeah, I guess if it was lodged in the left eye, she would have it, but... I imagine she was searched after she was brought to the hospital and all of her clothes were looked through for evidence, but... I don't know. When we arrived on the scene, there was no blood on the horse the body was mounted upon. Which means the merry-go-round wasn't the murder scene. Shoko was killed somewhere else and then brought there to be displayed. That means Mizuki couldn't have done it. She's 12. She can't move a body or drive a car. Were you considering her a suspect? That's part of the job. If there's even the slightest possibility. Oh. Then this is good news. It means the likelihood of Mizuki being the killer is almost zero. I knew that from the start. She would never put her hands on her own mother. She doesn't have what it takes to commit murder. Yep. Sweet girl. I mean, I haven't actually met her because... I've only seen her in her weird coma, so... I don't know what's going on there. Perhaps she was playing hide-and-seek. By the way, the question was, why was Mizuki inside the column? Hide-and-seek? It was not a serious suggestion. I was merely joking, as you call it. I wonder why Aiba changes so much. Like, Aiba's still sassy in both things, but I feel like Aiba, the one that we see in our mind, is a lot more forthcoming and a lot more human than robotic. Aiba, can you give me a timeline of the events of the crime? At once. Okay, approximately 5 p.m. Shoko's time sent that Nile message to Mizuki. Uh, approximately blank p.m., Mizuki receives Nile message, unknown sent her, request to come to Bloom Park. Why is it unknown? Shouldn't we be able to get her phone? Approximately 8.10 p.m., Mizuki calls Oda and asks him to accompany her to Bloom Park. Uh, 9 p.m., Mizuki and Oda discover Shoko's corpse. Oda leaves Mizuki, flees the crime scene. 9.05, Oda reports it. 9.30, first responders arrive on crime scene. And then, all over an hour later, 
Date shows up. Probably the culprit themselves. But Mizuki wouldn't obey the instructions of a complete stranger. Then Mizuki knew the sender. That's what I'm thinking. Or the suspect used her friend's phone. Aiba, can you hack into the phone and find out who sent the Nile message? Nile's security protocols are intricate. It will take time to decipher. Okay, well that's better than it not happening at all. Anything on your mind? Yes, as a matter of fact. I checked the surveillance cameras around Bloom Park again. And I noticed something strange. Something strange? There were no cars. Yesterday, in the parking lot and the streets in the vicinity, there was not a single vehicle. Huh. Are you sure? I am. Then, how did the suspect move the corpse? I have no idea. Maybe through a sewage system? It's probably the only way they could get past a camera. Police headquarters. Welcome back. I brought her here after her examination was over. Is Mizuki here? Mizuki. Oh, she does not look good. Has she said anything? No, still can't talk. Was it okay for you to bring her here? I got permission from the hospital. Apparently, the hospital director has been poking a few of the nurses. So I asked him about that, and all of a sudden he seemed very open to the idea. <laughs> That's not permission, it's blackmail. There have been three cases of blackmail in the first hour of this game. Eh, same thing. <laughs> you know what you need to do now, right? Sync with her. Oh, we're going to... Okay. I suppose that is one way to get the information we need. Oh, hey! It's the professor guy. Strange strings of characters and figures scroll across the monitor. A binder full of papers. It looks like the manual for the sink machine. Just a chair. There's nothing on the monitor. Sink machine. There's an enormous machine beyond the window. This machine is known as the sink machine. And Mizuki. I'll try talking to her. She can't hear me from here. <laughs> okay. Kinda could've guessed that myself. CRT monitor. Date, look. It's the girl from that horror movie, coming out of the well. What the hell are you talking about? Whoa. <laughs> CRT monitor. No one crawled out of it. Yet. Spoopy. One of these times, I'm gonna look back here or something when we go into this room, and she's gonna be on the TV. Maybe if I stare at it long enough, something will happen. I highly doubt it, but... It definitely isn't, like flickering downward or anything. I think it's just gonna make a bunch of things. Steel shelf, I opened it up. It's completely packed with books. They're all homoerotic boys. Oh God. Boys love manga and gay romance novels. Interesting, Pewter, interesting. Well, we know something about him now. A metal shelf placed along the wall. Interesting. This kind of furniture is often used for pile drivers in professional wrestling. Now where on earth did you learn that? Alright, we better start talking to them. About Iba. Hey, Pewter. About Iba. Could you do something about her personality? Do something about it? It wouldn't kill her to be more modest. Maybe a little more ladylike? If you dare reprogram me, I will self-destruct in your eye socket. That is a horrific threat! <laughs> So you were listening, huh? How's Mizuki doing? Her vitals are stable. Her EEG is also stable. I think we can proceed. Are you sure this is okay? She's only 12. You sure this is okay? <laughs> the machine is safe. I can guarantee that. You have nothing to worry about. 
Alright, he seems confident. Boss, are you sure you want to do this? If we don't do it now, then when? This is exactly the kind of situation Abyss was founded for. Besides, if you dive into Mizuki's subconscious, you may be able to help her. Her aphonia is psychogenic. Physically, she's fine. Her injuries are mental. Which is understandable, after seeing her mother like that. Yeah. You may be able to heal her, Date. You just have to sync with her. You're the only one who can. I understand. Did you get Renju's permission? Renju Okiura is Mizuki's legal guardian. Did you get permission from him? I couldn't get in touch with him. What? I thought he was being questioned by a local unit. His questioning ended around noon. He hasn't been heard from since. Why would he... I don't know. Any progress on the investigation? You're asking me that now? I'm asking you to sync with Mizuki because we have no progress. Maybe Mizuki saw something at the scene. Maybe she went inside that merry-go-round to hide. But she isn't answering any questions. The only way to find out is to dive into her subconscious mind. Don't you agree? Alright, well, let's get this thing started. Oh, shoot. I didn't think he was gonna give me a whole lot of stuff. Stop. That's Pewter. His real name is Am Amonima. But here, but he goes by Pewter here. He's 36 years old. He's a member of Abyss like me. He's a genius engineer that designed the sync system and other machines. He also invented Aiba. He's her caretaker in a way. Right now he's operating the sync console. Are you ready? We are ready to begin. Date, go to the sync room. Got it. Oh boy. Agent Dante, Mizuki is reacting. I don't know why he's so quiet all of a sudden. Her heart rate is rising and her brain waves are showing signs of disturbance. She may be getting nervous about the procedure. Date, try to calm her down. How do I do that? It's true that she can't speak to you. But she can hear you. Try talking with her. Sure thing, boss. The sink machine. The sink gear. The sinker and the subject both wear the gear over their eyes during the sink. It acts as a kind of interface. Alright. Mizuki? Uh, about Abyss. Mizuki, I've never told you this, but... I'm not an ordinary policeman. I belong to a special investigation unit called Abyss. Advanced Brain Investigation Squad. We explore the human mind with state-of-the-art technology and research. There are a billion kinds of suspects and persons of interest out there. People that lie, people that don't say anything. People that have head injuries or some that have deep mental wounds that keep them from talking. So, how do we get clues from these people? We have to get inside their heads. The truth is in their minds. Our job is to find it. About the sink gear. I know it looks scary, but trust me, there's nothing to be afraid of. There's no pain, no side effects. When this is all over, you'll go back to your regular life like this never happened. Sink. Sinking is what we call diving into someone's subconscious mind. You sink deep down into their psyche. I feel like explaining everything to her selves. is gonna be our best bet. It's gonna be the best way to get her to calm down. People like me are called sinkers. Sinkers enter the subject's subconscious, which is a dreamlike state we call somnia. It's Latin for dream. There are six sinkers at Abyss. I'm one of them. Wait, there's six? Does that mean she's also one, or...? Okay. Well, that opens up a whole new can of worms. That means this whole system could be really corrupt, if need be. So here's what's going to happen. I'm gonna be inside your head. I'll be looking for clues about the culprit. Not only that, we will also attempt to discover the cause of Mizuki's muteness and rectify it. With her aphonia cured, we can ask her further questions directly. 
When this is all over. Hey, Mizuki. When this is all over, what should I say? When this is all over, let's go get some of the stew you like. Let's go get some ramen. Let's go... This is what the men use for. And go into file and see what she likes. Mizuki, she likes raw seafood. How Date holds chopsticks. Oh, wait, no, that's what she dislikes. She likes ramen, unagi, metal pipes, and iris. Why metal pipes? I guess she was carrying one earlier, but I didn't realize that was a like. Yeah, I, I have a beautiful 12-year-old 6th grade daughter, and her favorite hobby is pipes. Metal pipes, specifically. Studies martial arts and enjoys emotionally attacking Tate. <laughs> Mizuki is Renju Okiora and Shoko Nadami's daughter. Although she is not related to Date, he became her de facto guardian four years ago. The two have lived under the roof ever since. Alright, well, I'll say we'll get some ramen or unagi. Those are both options, so they're both correct. Uh, let's go get some... Unagi. I remember you saying how you liked watching the eels get prepared for cooking. How they pin the head to the board and the shaft is wriggling around. Dante. That time I honestly didn't mean it to sound dirty. Oops. Should watch my mouth around Mizuki. Date, her heart rate is steady. EEG is stable. Date, get into position. Let's begin. Oh, and special agent, I forgot to mention one thing. I added a new feature to the sync system. What did you add? A new feature? You'll learn more when you're synced. It's very useful. Sure, got it. Well, let's sync up. They're just VR headsets. Okay. You ready? Okay. Ready anytime. Remember, Date. You have only six minutes in the Somnium world. So only six minutes Any to solve longer, the puzzle. And your consciousness will be absorbed by the subjects. Yeah, I know. I'll find a lead and get out in under six minutes. We're counting on you. Well then, let's begin. One thing I don't like about this is... Woo, that's fancy. One thing I don't like about this is how they, like, just turn down their volume instead of giving us kind of like a... headset sound for the people talking through the glass. Just... It, it just makes them hard to hear, honestly. <laughs> like, they're barely audible in my position. Okay, six minutes. Let's do this, Iba. What was that? Nothing. I was merely trying to enter the scene like a cybernetic assassin from the future. <laughs> well, if you're trying to do that, you'd have to do it naked. Is this... Oh, they're referencing Ghost in the Shell. Awesome. Whoa, it's like it's frozen in time. Lightning in a birdcage. Maybe this is representative of Mizuki's state of mind. The fact that Shoko was killed here must weigh heavily on Mizuki's heart. Mizuki should be inside that column. To get the information we need, we will have to deal with the lightning and the cage and get to Mizuki. Move fast, or time is going to run out. Unnecessary. Look around. Look around? This is the new feature of sync that Pewter mentioned. You can stop time? Only when standing still. Time is moving incredibly slowly. Currently, you and I are transmitting information at high speed, so it only appears as though time has stopped. Are you familiar with the concept of time dilation? It has to do with relativity, right? Two people can experience time differently depending on space-time. This is similar to that. The flow of time in Somnium is different than the real world. This could be useful. You can only stay in Somnium for six minutes, right? But with this, you could take your time and explore. Let's get started. Somnium scan! Activate! Oh, it was I didn't realize this was something she had to do every time. Whoa! Mental lock number one. Mental lock number two. 
Mental lock number three. Damn. That's a lot of puzzles I'm gonna fail at solving. Mizuki is mute. By healing her mental wounds, you may be able to get important info. To reach Mizuki, something must be done about the lightning that keeps striking the birdcage. Lightning's supposed to strike at the highest point. Hmm? An ice pick piercing Shoko's photograph. Aiba, the speaker over there. It's shaking. Hmm. Means they're connected. I see. It must be connected to the ice pick. Just like the other time. Healing Mizuki should be your top priority. I know. There's a six minute time limit in Insomnia. Time is expended whenever Aiba is moving or performing an action. Pay attention to the remaining time left in the upper right of the screen. Unlock all mental locks within the 360 second time limit. So, what do we have to work with? A speaker pillar, the birdcage itself, some panda pieces, and there's the gate. All right, well, this is right An in front of us. Stabbed into Shoko's photograph. Oh man, this is so nerve-wracking. Uh, let's push it in. Date, are you certain? Will this heal Mizuki? I don't know. Just try it. Mm, understood. No good, huh? Mizuki is still a child. The solution may be simpler than you think. Simple, maybe. But this is a dream. Not everything goes how you expect. Shoko's okay. photograph has an ice pick stabbed through it. Let's... Wait, what does this mean? One out of two? Right. No one would want to see their mother like this. Oh, we can divert the lightning to that. It keeps going. What is this? Something happened over there. The booth is... So now the lightning's hitting that. I want to go explore everything, but I'm afraid I won't have enough Pillar time to. Is a the thing. Rod. It looks like we can get to the birdcage now. Our next step must be to remove it. I love these kinds of puzzles, honestly, because they remind me of Silent Hill. Silent Hill's puzzles almost have no logic behind them, and when you figure it out, it is the most what the hell moment ever. Like there's one puzzle where you need to crack a walnut open with a vice to get a diamond, and then you need to un like twist a coat hanger to bring a ladder to it's it, it's ridiculous. I think my favorite one is connecting a using a piece of hair with a small hook, or I think it's like a paper clip or something, and you use it to get a key out of a shower drain. It almost makes no sense. But that's Date, how it works. We got a timey. A timey? A timey? Time induction matter in encephalon. You can think of it as an item that affects the flow of time. Okay. Using this, you can slow down or speed up time insomnium. Is this another function pewter added? Correct. Sounds like a dream. Well, it is a dream. And because it is a dream, extraordinary things such as this are possible. Got it. Guess I'll try to use them where I can. Timey. Timeys are items that affect time. You will sometimes obtain them when you perform an action. Timeys only affect the time taken to perform an action. You are only able to hold th up to three timeys. Picking up a timey when you already hold three will replace one. Timeys are expended after one use, but use them as often as you can. What did that do? I'm so confused. Okay, well... Let's... There's a microphone here. This appears to be the microphone for the speaker. Uh... Threaten? Why would I threaten the speaker? Let's try shouting. Just to see what happens. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> yeah! Stop it already! 
<laughs> that was worth the time. Oh, so we get timies for doing those I'm things. Like so that's what we get. Make time one fourth? Oh, you make an action only take a certain amount of time. So for example, doing this now takes 25 seconds, but we can only make it take six if we want. I get it. I, I'm gonna hold off for a second. I don't see a reason to go around threatening microphones. The control room of the merry-go-round lifted out of the ground. Knock open. What is your plan once I am inside? It is a control room. Maybe we can do something in there. I do not think it will be that easy. I highly Just doubt it also. What is going on? I didn't expect to see this inside. I do not see an exit either. But there's something suspicious here. Oh, what is this? I see two bird cages. Looks like there's something inside them. Take a look. There's a fish in that one. And there's a bird cage into something? A bird cage with blown up rubbers inside. There is also a deflated rubber on the floor. Could you please not call it a rubber? <laughs> you can say balloon. I do not understand. It is clearly rubber. Please. I... I couldn't see a point in peeking inside. If we tackle this, all the balloons will fly out. The other one just has a fish in it. Uh... I'm gonna one-fourth this one and lift it. This'll be easy. Glad to hear it. What? But it was so heavy! Oh, I just took a route or something. Oh no, I just realized... This is a zero escape game through and through. But nothing happened. Oh? What is this? A deflated balloon. Retry. Retry will allow you to return to a save point just after unlocking a mental lock. But you only have three retries. Going back one lock costs one, and going back two costs two. And going back three locks will cost all three. Well, you regain your three retries by selecting restart from the menu or failing the sink. This is likely your best option if time is low. A deflated Agent rubber. Date, you've got five minutes. I know. I told you, please call it a balloon. What are you getting so worked up about? <sighs> eat? What do you mean, eat? Blow it up. Throw. Eat. Um... I'm gonna choose the right option. It's obviously eat. What? Yeah, you can put it in your mouth, chew it, and then blow it up like bubblegum. I could blow it up normally. I love how she just doesn't want to do it. Fine, we'll blow it up normally, like you want. Oh, so this one just defaults it to 30 seconds. Blow it up then. Understood. It's huge. I wish your boobs were that big. What? Are you serious? Those are obscenely large for a human. Well, I suppose I am not technically human. So... Date, please, be quiet. Uh, 
Oh, hey, it worked. You were able to get out? Perhaps the balloon was the key. I remember now, a story I heard from Mizuki a while back. One time when Mizuki was just a little girl, Shoko bought her a balloon. It was one of the nice helium ones. But the string slipped through her hand. The balloon sailed up into the sky. Shoko snapped. She scolded Mizuki for hours. Maybe that's why. Mizuki put up balloons inside the birdcage. That way, they could never fly away again. But I guess Aiba and I made her rel relive a painful memory. Alright, now that the birdcage is off, let's get Mizuki. Do you not see the horses spinning at hurricane speeds? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Just dive in there. Dive right on in. I have confidence. If you stop time, you can go in, right? But I cannot stop time while I'm moving. Oh, right. Guess we gotta figure out how to stop it from spinning. Well, that head looks like it's spinning around. Map, if you're lost or want to save time, try checking the map. Why is the map the X button and not M? Like, everything else. Let's go check out that panda. This is such a weird puzzle system, I love it. The panda is... floating. Where? Slap down. Kick away. I don't think I want to wear it. That thing doesn't look healthy to put on our head. Kicking it away... That wouldn't stop it from spinning. Slapping it down may ground it. It's gonna take up a lot of time. Let's try slapping it down. I see it! The view from the top! That was pointless. Well, it happens. The panda is floating. Uh, let's try wearing it. That's the only option that stops it from spinning. Wear it? Like this? <laughs> How are you doing that? Unknown. I guess that was a waste of time. It was kind of fun, though. <laughs> um... The panda is... floating. I guess in that case, we'll just... I need more time. Using up 30 seconds is a lot of time. Even if it is a slight time saver. I doubt it has anything to do with the microphone. Let's just try the last option under 30 seconds. Merry-go-rounds can fly? Date, over there! Iris? Who? Why? Oh wait, that's Iris. And she has stab wounds all over her. Why is Iris... She what? She appears to be frozen. What the hell is going on? What is this? Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Why do you never keep quiet? Is this fun for you? Giving your mother a hard time? That hurts! That hurts! Please stop! I'm sorry! Why are you here? I'm sorry! I'm sorry! If you weren't here, everything would be fine! I'm sorry! Apologizing means nothing! Say something! Don't make me into the bad guy! But... What's that look, huh? Ow! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! It's all your fault. You... You... I wish you had never been born! Jesus! I think I'm starting to see it. I knew she liked fish, but... Fish didn't seem like it was gonna remove the birdcage. Mizuki's voice. The other voice is likely... Damn. What's going on here? Iba, look out! What? Is it coming back down? 
was about to become a pancake. Good thing this isn't a bed and breakfast. That frozen iris does intrigue me. But Mizuki first. Let's get to Mizuki while the merry-go-round is stopped. B. Stop Mizuki's tears. If you choose the correct answer as your final action, you can actually exceed the 300 sec 360 second time limit. Even if it seems like you don't have a lot of time left, don't give up. You might be able to do it. Tutorial. Pewter sleep talking. Uh, one more second. When you clear, you get a prize? No boss? Anything but that. Okay. Well, that took up 30 seconds. I know I only got four minutes. Spank. Ride it. Talk. I don't think it's gonna talk to us. A merry-go-round. Although riding it does sound pretty fun. <laughs> what is this? Fun? Does it look fun? You look cute like that. Oh, I see. <gasps> oh, that's hilarious. That's gonna be a thumbnail. A merry-go-round horse. Um. Let's do one half and talk to it. Excuse me, but do you happen to know the culprit? I see. Did you learn something? I did. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. Well? This horse cannot speak English. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, this game is a too funny sometimes. Have three minutes, Dante. Okay, I get it. I get it. I don't think I even want to use this right now. No, I didn't want to write it again. No. Oh. Anyways, I didn't mean to do what I just did. We'll spank the horse, I guess. Yeah! You punched it? Nothing is happening. Poor horse. Well, the horse is a complete diversion. Mizuki. It's Mizuki. Encourage. Speak kindly. Break the glass. Give presents. Oh, if I had gotten the fish, I could have given it to her. But that feels like it's a different route. Almost like a different thing. Uh... I don't have a present to give her. Giving her the balloon seems cruel if that's all we have. But... Maybe it's best I take the worst possible way to go first. And while I have this one third, this may be our best option. A gift? Oh, that might work. What? Mizuki, now you can have a taste of the merry-go-round every day of your Aiba! life. It will also improve your health. That's your gift? That it's didn't Mizuki. work. Um. Let's speak kindly down to 20 seconds. I don't want to break the glass. Mizuki, can you hear me? We will protect you, Mizuki. We will always be there for you. So, it's all right now. Hey, do you think we can use that speaker? Maybe oh. she needs to hear her mother's voice. The speaker from before. <laughs> do you really think her mother's gonna comfort her? After hearing that? <laughs> Mom loves you, Missy. I love you. <laughs> I am so glad that you were born. So, so glad.
Hey, do you hear something? Is that... a phone ringing? Where... where's it coming from? Date, don't! You can't stay any longer! What do you mean? I still have like 150 seconds left. Stop Mizuki's tears. There's a completely different route. Mizuki A. What? There is a route system. That means that there's a Mizuki B that we can take. Saturday, Kitai. I guess it's Kitai. Are you okay? Mizuki. She's still not talking. She hasn't been healed. She's still traumatized. Whatever option I chose, it was the wrong one. Iba, call Iris' phone. It's urgent. Why the rush? Please, just call. Hello? This is Kaname Date from the MPD. I met you earlier today. Oh, Date! Is something wrong? Where are you right now? Um, I'm at home. Okay, don't go anywhere. Lock the door and stay at home. Can you tell me why? Who cares why? This is a direct order from the police. You mean a personal order? Okay, but if I do... Will you play Shovel Forge with me tomorrow? No. Then go on a date with me. A date? If you promise <laughs> me we'll go on a date, I'll stay home and not say a peep. If you don't promise me, then... I'll wander around the city dragging a heavy suitcase. What? Uh... <sighs> All right. Understood. Understood? Great. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Fine. Just don't go outside, okay? If anything happens, call me immediately. My number is... I have it in my history. See ya! What was that? A phone call? It's nothing. Sorry, Mizuki. I have a place to go. Are you okay? She didn't answer. About Iris' body. Mizuki, I saw something strange in your dream. Iris, she was frozen. She was dead. What was that? Tell me, Mizuki, please. Date, there is no point attempting to speak with her. I know. Mizuki's aphonia has not healed. I know. Damn it. Uh, shit. Well, anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and we'll see. We'll actually see. Do you believe in prophetic dreams? Where is this coming from? Oh, I see. This is about the body you saw in Mizuki's Samyum. Her name is Iris Sagan, the girl you went to Bloom Park with today. How do you know that? Iba told me. It is one of my duties to deliver regular investigation reports. About them. Prophecies, huh? That's why you called Iris. But, Date, come on. I know. A dream is just a dream. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with reality. But still, I just have this gut feeling. Date, are you alright? Perhaps the sink is causing negative side effects. I hope that's all it is. About Mizuki's aphonia. It didn't go well. But it's not all bad. 
The sink wasn't a total waste of time. Huh? We found clues. Clues? Right. About what I saw in Somnium. No need to report specifics. We saw it all from here in the control room. What the sinker sees in Somnium is projected here, remember? We've got it all recorded. Oh, let me guess. I bet if I would have looked in the file for Mizuki. Doesn't say she actually dislikes balloons or anything, so... <laughs> Isn't it incredible? I invented it. So, we know about everything you saw. The phone, the frozen corpse... About the ringtone I heard in Somnium. Boss, I heard a ringtone in Mizuki's Somnium. I know. But I couldn't tell where it was coming from. Yeah. I don't even know if it's real or something Mizuki invented. But if Mizuki really did hear that ringtone... Then there must have been a phone somewhere on site. Did CSI report anything like that? No, nothing. They searched the site, but didn't find a single thing. Alright, well, can I leave? That leads to the sink room. How do I get out? There's too many people in danger to be staying here. About Somnium. In a normal dream, the person experiencing the dream cannot remove themselves from it. Dreams are first-person experiences. However, the circumstances are slightly different during a sink. The sinker dives into the subject's mind and experiences their subconscious thoughts. Who's dreaming about some karate dudes in a sumo wrestling, or not sumo wrestling, in like a Greek amphitheater. But this dream is experienced as an observer, as though you were watching a play. The subject is the author, director, and actor. The sinker is merely the audience. About prophetic dreams. Ah, the corpse you saw in Somnia. You're wondering if that was some kind of vision of the future. Yeah, that's right. Well, let's see. As a man of science, I don't believe in such things. Prophecies and the like. However, if it was a prophecy, I would suggest the girl wear some kind of metal plate. Huh? Metal plate? You saw her. She was stabbed countless times in the back. She could have used some stab proof armor or something. Stab proof? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just uh, indulging in the fantasy. Of you mean literally anything? <laughs> Don't mind me. Anyway, prophecies are simply not possible. True. You see? Lastly, about that ringtone I heard in Somnium. I know about the ringtone you heard, but I couldn't tell where it was coming from. Did Mizuki actually hear that? Or was it just a dream? Or her imagination? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. Can you analyze the sound or something? Unfortunately not. Can I leave then? About the ringtone. Hey Mizuki, tell me something. In your dream world, I heard a phone ring. Did you hear that somewhere, or did you just imagine it? Date, there's no- I know there isn't. You can heal her. Her symptoms haven't improved. She'll be sent back to the hospital. Maybe the doctors can help her. Uh, sad I couldn't. Mizuki, I have to ask you. You got a Nile message yesterday. The thing is, if I had gone the other way, if I had done the fish, I probably wouldn't have seen Iris. That merry-go-round wouldn't have moved, it wouldn't have lifted and revealed something. Although I could have asked her for questions if she started talking again at the very least. And then you went to Bloom Park. Who sent you the message? I checked her phone, but the history was white. I am trying to identify the sender now, but it will take some time. Can I leave now? About the ice pick. Mizuki, when we found you at the merry-go-round, you were holding the ice pick. 
I'm not accusing you of anything. I trust you. I just want to know why you were holding it. Answer me, Mizuki. Tate, please. Yelling at her is counterproductive. Damn it. <sighs> Summarize for me. I think I'll go to Bloom Park again. Looking for the phone? It might be there, it might not. I just want to be sure. Take care of Mizuki, okay? Yeah, leave it to me. Uh, well, you guys can tell I'm engaged in the story because I'm super frustrated playing it right now. Seeing Mizuki like this sucks, and seeing that about Iris is really unsettling. But I'm going to have to end this episode here regardless. So if you want to see more, please leave a like or just subscribe to the channel and then you will see it every time it shows up. And by every time it shows up, I mean every time YouTube decides to tell you a new video is up. But man, I uh, hope you guys like this series. And yeah, I, I can't wait to see what happens next. Right now.